Hey everyone, welcome to the Matplotlib section. In the previous section, we covered topics related to the library SciPy, which is the primary library for performing numerical computations in Python from first principles. In this section, we'll be presenting some basic features of the Matplotlib library. As the primary visualization tool in Python, we'll be working with a basic setup for visualizing two and three dimensional plots via Matplotlib library. We'll also cover scatter, contour, and histogram plots as examples of two-dimensional plots. Let's move on to the first video of this section that deals with some basic features of the Matplotlib library as the primary visualization tool in Python. In this video, we'll be learning some of Matplotlib's functionality to get you started with using this important Python library for graphing 2D data sets. For a general overview of the Matplotlib library, you can get started by referring to this link. We'll first start making available the Matplotlib visualization environment in the current Python session. This is done via the instruction import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. For example, we'll use the x and y values shown here. Both of them are defined as Python list objects, but they could also be defined as NumPy array objects. Accordingly, once you've decided to visualize the plot of some 2D dataset, you need to put the data in this format, the X dataset in one Python list, or NumPy array, and the Y set in another Python list, or NumPy array. Other complicated forms for data representation can be, use, can be used, but we won't be concerned with them in this introductory short video. But we won't be concerned with them in this introductory short video on Matplotlib. Let's see how to generate the 2D graph of the of the dataset. We'll start by using the recommended setup of assigning a name to the plot object, the figure in this case. After that, the matplotlib pyplot method is called to draw the plot. It takes mandatory arguments, the x and y values, to be shown in the graph. The other arguments are optional. For extra details, see the documentation we already mentioned. The two mandatory arguments are a string of characters containing how the data points will be shown in the graph. In both plots, we've chosen a bullet as the marker shape, represented by an O. The colors to represent them are blue for the first plot and red for the second, represented by characters B and R. The data points will be joined by a continuous and dashed line, represented using the characters dash for continuous lines and dash dash for the dash dashes for the dash dashes line respectively. The order in which these characters appear in the string is not important. Some other ways of representing the line style and the marker shape will be given below. After that, a label representing each plot in a legend is given. The second plot command includes two extra optional parameters. Includes two extra optional parameters. Used to control the line width, LW, and the marker size MS in the plot. You can modify the value given to any one of the optional parameters to see how the plot changes. For example, in case we do not want the data points to be joined, the dash and the dash dash characters should be omitted, should be removed from the referred string. The next six commands. Following the second plot method of matplotlib pyplot can be given in any order. The first three indicates how to set labels to the horizontal and vertical axis and to provide a title to the plot. For each case, the respective keyword is self-explanatory. A title, x label, y label, and also contains the way to change the font size of the respective string. We continue showing the commands to set tick labels at some selected position on the horizontal axis. A similar instruction is used to set the values on the vertical axis and how to change the font size of the tick marks. The next command shows how to display the legend of the graph, identifying the plots to which a label was given. Some other ways of representing the legend are given below. The order of the last two commands is important. In case we'd like to save our plot in a file on the hard drive, the save method must be given. 
the save method must be given before the show method, which is used to display the plot on the computer screen. Also, the save method should be given after whatever feature we would like to appear in the plot. Here we see the result of the already explained plot commands. We show some of the values that can be used to set the line style, the marker shape, and the color codes for plotting purpose. A complete listing of them can be found at this website. You could change any of these values in the respective string to check how the plot changes accordingly. We'll see some of the values that could be used to place the legend in the frame containing the graph. A complete list of them could be found at the above mentioned link. Let's mention that while the keyword must be enclosed in single quotes, like lock equals best, or double quotes, like lock equals best, the numerical codes must not be enclosed by them. They should be used in the form location lock equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Some references for further reading are the Matplotlib gallery and the SciPy lecture notes on Matplotlib. In this video, we were able to practice basic plotting commands to display 2D graphs via Matplotlib library.